Uh, so it's my first tutorial. I'm sorry that if I'm bad at that. Then this is Python 100, not even 101. That there is a basis. So if you learn some like training stuff in Python, it's not a good basis to go for in that one. So we start from scratch. And the first thing that I will need from you is to understand Python. So does anybody have Python stack? Does anybody doesn't have Python stack? One. So two. Okay. So if you need Python, what I can ask you is to go on the middle of the page. And then you can install one of those. So in the current Python 3.6, you can select one of the uh, installers. And you can follow the, the install path. Uh, one of the things that we'll do also is I will pass this. You can take one. Then I have Joanne also, which is at the back of the room there. Right. And uh, if you need anything, so we will be too. So I will try to manage from here. But then if you need something, you said to put your hands up or like that. You can speak this on the front of your computer. And you can continue doing something if you have questions. Yeah. And you will come around, or I will come around, depending on how it is doing. OK? Let's go by to the standing hands. OK? So you can take one and make it pass. Okay. Uh, Can I just try to switch the light off to see if the, the yeah. is it better or better with the light or without light? It doesn't change much. <laughs> <laughs> so then we work with some notebook and also also some light coming out whatever. Uh, regarding the notebook you can find them on my people. So either you can check here in Google GMX so I can show you how to do that. So you can go in GitHub. Back home, if you want to go back, you will be always welcome to do that. 
So does anybody has a Jupyter notebook installed? Or who, who doesn't have it installed that didn't know that they have to install it? Okay. Uh, so we'll see that. Anything we pray maybe the whole way? Because at the beginning we don't need it specially. It's just easier to do things, but then I need to know who is working on Windows. Okay, Linux and Mac IC already. Okay. So the first thing that we start to work with is the basic types of Python. Like this is going to be more uh, interactive to do stuff. Okay. 
So the first thing that I want to present is a new type in, in, in Python. So before to start, who already program in one language? Programming language? <coughs> Everyone? No? Did you ever program in MATLAB, for instance? Yes? Uh, there is some C++ programmers? What? And R, maybe? Okay. Okay, yes. So... <coughs> can, can you increase the fonts of the notebook? Yeah, I see. Thanks. So, the, you have many... Yeah, that's not to be a bit so You have many four types in, in, uh, in Python. So the first type that you have is integer. So I think that you in C++ this is ints, and then uh, you declare your variables. And in Python, so you don't have types. Okay. So the only way that you can figure an integer is that you put an integer inside the command line. And if you want to check the type, you can use the command type, and then it will tell you which type of it, of things it is. So for instance, if we take the integer five. And that we add the type, it could uh, tell us it's an integer. Okay. Then this, I think that you already know, so you can put it inside the variables using the equals, and you can make much operations, for instance, and additions. And if you still check the type of I in that case, you will start by integer things. Okay, that's something you cannot make it. So for the one that works in separate place, simply, or I mean that you care about uh, memory and all those things, it would be interesting to know that the ints in Python are actually on 32 bits. Okay, just I give you piece of information. Like that. It's more interesting for the tools afterwards. So in the same way, if you go in the NumPy tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow or maybe it's afternoon. So maybe you don't have NumPy, but we can play also with the accuracy of all the integers. So here is just to explain why it's what was 32 bits. So when you use pure Python, it will be only 30. Every time 32 bits is uh, integers. And when you use NumPy, so instead I bring NumPy, I can have access to different integer types. So for instance, 16, 32, 64, and 8, and then it will use the, the precisions of the integers. So for instance, I could use 8 bits integers and this is i. And checking the type of i, in my case, you will have these tensions. So, so you will never mess up between the types, or if you don't know, you just use the command type and it will tell you what it is. So, why is it important is that if I am only 8 bits, I can only go 255 values. So if I do 256 and I check the value of i, then you get something which is weird because I have an overflow. I don't have enough bits to contain the value. And what you have is wrong. Okay? So you can prove out what type is underneath. It's this unumpied or pure python types. Okay? So this is something which is interesting. Then we have about the same thing with floats. So how to figure out floats in Python? It's pretty easy. It's not really a comma, it's really a point. And this means is a float. Okay. Floats in Python are always 64 bits. And in the same manner, you have non-binary types that if you check and type floats. <coughs> We have 128, 16, 32, so you can choose the precision. So it's working exactly the same way, okay? Then there is the integers. And if you play one of them, and that you check the type, we have the same things that are here, okay? Then the next time that you can have. So maybe we have positions and they're like uh, right? complex numbers. So you can play also with complex.
complex numbers. So I don't remember all these in my time. Uh, I met you I. And here, it will be the same, but it's one bit. So you don't, you, you have always to put something at the top. So you have a complex number. And that is one today. This thing is recognized as a complex number. So then I can create a number by adding the real part and the imaginary part. Okay, and it will handle everything inside. And then you can also multiply. <coughs> Then the last type, which is also interesting, is a Boolean. So we always make, I mean, we usually make Boolean operations. So you can check using bigger, smaller, and you have two values which are true and false. The start value capital letters, and that's only thing that you have about it with us. So whenever you make a comparison, you will get one of those two out of the comparisons. Okay. So now a couple of operations that you can do, and that is more interesting. So we spoke about like the precisions and the different types. So what you have to think in Python, since that you have no types, you have to think about what will be the implied conversions when you use operations. So if I take two integers and that I make multiplications. So I don't have a point. It means that if I check, check the type of this, I will get an integer. Okay? That's kind of obvious. But if I see the points here, and that I check the type, I get the float. So always the good, what Python does, he takes this one, he will convert it to a float. This one is already a float, and he will make the multiplication between both, and we can do a non-casted result. Okay. So this is something that you have maybe to think about when you make operation. In separate space, you don't have that problem. You always define the type and what you want. Here you have to think what will happen. Okay. Then that will be the cool part of what people in Python do. So if I do the divisions in Python 3, I get that. So now can you try to make a division and tell us what you obtain when you do this? Zero. Zero. Okay, great. So if you don't have the same Python, it doesn't work the same way. Uh, the idea is that in your case, in Python 2, when you were making these divisions, you were doing the integer division. So I have an integer, I have another integers. I will return you the form of the two divisions. So I will return you zero. Uh, if I want to do that in Python 4, I can see, I use a double division. Okay? Now, to have Python 2 and Python 3, we have the same. Because what we do is we try to move from Python 2 to Python 3, and that everything is compatible in the same in both ways. Okay? So, yes, the library which is called DOM features, which is, you will import. Uh, how the statement import in Python 3 imports divisions. Okay. And now you can retry after importing this to do the same operation than this one. And then it's working. Okay. So when you make some code and that you want to make it compatible to 3, you have usually two things to import. Here's one, which is this one. And then I will show another one now is a print. So sometimes you want to print something inside the terminal and you just use the function print. Oops. And I, I do that, okay? Uh, in Python 2, apparently, you could do a step time. So it means that you didn't need to put parentheses. Here is a subfunction because I put parentheses. In Python 2, you were going to do that, which here it doesn't work because in Python 3, Print is a function, okay? So the same way, which is also a kind of logic, you can use the Python 3 uh, versions by doing from future import print, 
expansion. And if you do that, now, whatever, when you try to do these things in Python 2, it will raise the same error. So you will be obliged to use the function, the function line. OK? So and now, does anybody have any questions? Or, because, I mean, that's, that's OK. Yeah. Um, another question. Do you have a uh, specialty? <laughs> uh, of course, but I have no idea. I can just... You have a few. Okay. Just as a promise. <laughs> 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 Perfect. Okay. So, yeah, otherwise, mm -hmm. so we can yes. come back to the divisions. So now that was giving a float. Before in Python 2, if you wanted to uh, trigger a float, you would have a way, because we said that actually you would have conversion under the hood. And one way was to say that one the generator was a float. Okay? So I could use this, and for sure it would work. Uh, I would advise you just to use the from import features. Okay? I mean, the import function, import like the divisions, and to actually use <coughs> what you would do in Python 3. Okay? That's, it's already right point, and then you don't have the confusion to make it supposed to work, and you know what it is. Um, I, I think it's important to note that you only need this when you're writing code for both Python 2 yeah. and Python 3. It's when you want compatibility between Python 2 and Python 3. You want to have user using your own Python tool and user using that for um, with different Pythons. Okay, so next things that I will go through is the comparisons. So you can compare numbers together, so we already saw that it could give you some idea. So you can compare that what we call it what one. And we can make Superior, superior equal, okay. And then there is this, there is another thing in Python which is the is statement, okay. So the difference between equal equal and is is that is will check the IDs of the object that you work with, okay. And it will not just check the value that you have, but also check the IDs. So if I take ID1, it will give me an analysis files. And when I make one is one, what is it doing? Is it checking that the identifier of this guy is equal to the identifier of this other guy? So when you go in uh, objects, <laughs> you might want to check that an object is exactly the, I mean, that this is the same object. And you will use this and not equal equal. So it's something to know what are the slight differences. So here for the moment we not need it, but that would be interesting and so forth. So for instance, you have the example of one zero is not one. Okay? Because one is a float, so the one is will be an integer, so it will not have the same ID. So if I do ID of one and I change the ID of one dot zero. You will have two different IDs, okay? So the two numbers are, are different. So if I do one is one dot zero, it will be false. But if I do one is equal to one dot zero, that will be true. Okay. So this one check that the two values are the same. This one will check that the two objects for it is they have the same address. Okay? Then, what casting? So maybe it will be interesting to retransform an integer into a float or a an integer or a string to something else, to a number. So this is pretty straightforward. You use the function. So if you want a float, you use a float function. And you can put an integer inside, and it will return your float the same way you can use. the integer function, and you will convert this into an integer. So you have to be careful that 
it's making crop. If you want, for instance, to run, you use the run function and, and it will give you what you expect. Okay? Uh, an interesting thing is that you can put, we'll see just after what the screen, but they anticipate. Imagine that you read some text and what you obtain is a string. So then we can create code numbers by passing a string into code and it will automatically convert it to a code. So if you check now the type, it's a code. Okay. So then when you go in the docs, sometimes when you make conversions, you have a pretty fast way of doing conversion and then like normal way of what you would expect depending on and the function to find some way of Okay. Sorry? You have questions? Is this again dependent on the second question? It's working everywhere. No way. So wrong to the part? Are you to the part? Okay, no. Uh, I have no idea. I used to the part. What's the question? If in Python to the part, if you can do. Is this what? That is not working? It should. That's been around for a while. Okay. Did you maybe type a, a command set of a dot or something? On the screen. Okay. That's okay. So we do seven minutes. <laughs> Which is a uh, for length, 
which can take the legs to the fire. Sometimes You can add a new line or those type of characters I mean, uh, inside your, your, your screen tool. It wants to take lines like that. And when you print it, so if I put X, that I put X like this, so you see that I have my characters, and if I use the print statement, it will interpret those characters, so it can make a written idea. Okay. To access one of the characters inside this thing, you can use the, and it will be always the same. When you want to access an element of a container, so now we work with this thing, you will use the square brackets, and then here, the index of the element that you want. Uh, do you want that for the one that comes from MATLAB? I don't know if R can be the same. We start to come from zero in Python so that I can see uh, that in C++. So if you want the first characters, it's zero, x. OK, and I get the first characters. So we we'll start with the things which are maybe more difficult. The sentences are immutable, which means that the, the thing that I had before, I cannot put a new things inside. So it's something typical from the strings. If I try to say the first name of how I want to be called T, it's not possible because I can <coughs> I cannot change my objects. Okay? So if you want to make a new Change something, either you will need to use some function that will see the session or whereas you need to put, you can have, you have to do x is equal to your new chain of characters. Okay? Because you will not be able to change in x. So now I want you to start to start to make exercises so that you can inquire yourself a bit how those things are working. Uh, and Yeah, so it's to use the auto-compression. So what I mean by auto-compression, so x is a string, and if you type x points, so because x is actually an object in Python, you will be able to use tabulations twice, and then it will give you always a list of what the function you have, okay? Yes? For which part that you cannot? Is there a question? Oh, I think so. No? No, it doesn't work. Uh, so wait, I can check something. <laughs> So, for the one which are Python 2 and maybe you don't have those operations, you might be lucky if you have, so let me check. Yeah, you have something which is called IPython. Okay, so this is a, a normal Python but with some extensions which are you to uh, like easy auto compression and all those things that work for sure. 
Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sometimes it is cheap with Anaconda if, and if your Python 2 and this auto version doesn't work, but it, it will work in my mm -hmm. So if you find it, then you can um, you will have the same auto version. And it's even easier because you have a list which is coming from this time. So if, you have, if it doesn't work as a compression, you can always go back to Python. And usually if you work, use preferred iPython to Python because there are more features. Okay? But today I want you just to make their uh, Python, so I went to get the normal editors. So you can switch to that if in case that those options doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> so when I say what the leading underscore, what I mean by that is that you can use these things to underscore and then use the auto completions. Okay. And now you will see that those functions are things which are part of the objects in Python. So they are even things normally to users. But they are defining actually what your object can do. And for instance, we already use length, and we see that this object has the underscore underscore length functions, which mean that actually when we call length, it will call this function under the hood. So by using the auto compressions, I can know more or less without doing anything, and I don't have internet, I don't have the dot. I can still find out which function my object is implementing. So while you're in the middle of the web, the high node, the you can still understand which type of object and what you can do with. So the first thing that I was asking is like, okay, check what the multiplications the parameters is doing. And if we check the multiplications, I was saying multiplication because we have one multiple type. So I think that we have we will be able to use the star multiplication at some point. If we check also, we have an uh, addition probably. I don't see add, but it should be somewhere. Okay, we have an add function too, so we'll be able to use the press. So now what I want is that I have this x, and then I want you to, uh, to try to run this x multiplied by something and try to see what's happening, okay? And in this case, try to multiply it by, by an integer. And then you can tell you, okay, what's the operation, what does multiply that? So if anybody, I mean, if somebody succeeds to see what's it, you can just say what you see. So what is the purpose of the multiplying with strings? Okay, so with a string, when you multiply by an integer, it's just repeating the string. Okay, that's apparently that's working. So there's some behavior that at the beginning doesn't make sense, really, and then when you think about it, okay, why not? Okay, so. It's always good to have the to know exactly what those operations are going on. So in the same way now I want you to try to make the addition and to tell me what does it does. Okay? If you try to add two strings together. You think we saw that you have an add, so you should have a plus. So if you so if you in that case you can make extra sex. And then you can tell me what this thing is doing. Okay. So the first thing that you can do is you can say that this thing is concatenation. So if I do x, if I do x plus x, then in that case it's like a little bit right to put here. Is adding the first x concatenate with the sum of x. Okay. <coughs> so in this so afterwards, if we check again, <coughs> no underscore functions, well, enter them, and we have some which are equal, and we should have also not equal, so n if you somewhere, and it will allow us to make comparison between strings. So if I have x, and that I want to check that this is the specific values, so I don't know what was inside, but if I write this, it will tell me 
this is worse, okay? If you make a very good uh, character shape, the other shape is becoming worse. In the same way, you have the dotted equal, gradients, which is between exclamation equal, which will become true in like this. Okay. An interesting thing is, is the operator in. So if I'm going back here, and this is something specific to the containers, containers because it contains something, you have the contain functions on the top here, and it will allow you to check that the part of an element is inside the container. So for a string, we can actually check that the substring is inside. And how to do that, you write your side, and I want to check if it's in X, and you will tell yes. Okay, so you can partially match things using the in operator. Okay, so the second thing that is interesting, so now we saw the equal equal function. But before we saw that you can do X and tabulations, you have a bunch of functions which are coming. Okay? So now the data science is by checking the name there, I ask you to check that inside the string, this string, I want to check that the end of the string is finishing by something. And the second thing that I want is I say that it's not possible to uh, to affect the characters, but that you have functions. So I want you to replace inside the string a letter or something like that. Okay? So a letter by a letter. So now if you check inside this bunch of, of functions, you have two functions that do that. And then like you have two minutes to search or five minutes to search which one are doing it, and you can try to use it. And because we are here and that be useful also. You can always use and change the doc using the keyword L. So for instance, if I want to check what the center function is doing, I type L X dot center and it will give me a doc string which explains how the thing is working. So I don't need internet normally to do it. I can do it through the terminal, so it's less nice, but again, if you have no internet, I can say it to that. So now, from the X dots, you can check. If you are not sure, you can check which one you think that's working, and you can check the dot and try to use it, okay? And first task is just to try to modify your character. The other one is to check that the elements of the string is corresponding to another string. So you can try that. And if you have any questions, that don't mind to ask. So. Okay. 
So if we check, yeah, I thought I wish, and we can check the time for that. I think that is how it is working. And now, so X is our hyper string, so when we put that and this, we'll be able to put here the web to access to the size. Okay? So just to be sure what is inside this, I will just read it. So now I can say that for instance the world is finishing fine by and he will tell me yes. So you have the overweight degree, but imagine that you have a file name, the file by TXT, you want to say that you by TXT. Easy way to say okay, fine file name that's end with the TXT and you go, okay, that's finished. That, but uh, then for the replace, I didn't so, so far, but we have X dot replace function. And it's to replace the character by another one. So we can say that I want to replace E by a capital E. And that could make the operation in place. So now if I check X. No, uh, that doesn't make the operation in place that we turn uh, the results. This cannot make in place operation, it won't work. And X, you get now something where you replace the characters, okay? So you can change things inside. I think it's subject. So now I will start. So I need a much size for the strings, but I will present the space here and we will see that we will use it afterwards in the in the lists where it's much more useful. But let's start there because it's the same whole thing again. Okay? Okay. So you can put the sun directly and get it and you cannot do you cannot do that in front because X is immutable, so the string is immutable. So you cannot change an element in the string in place. So you need to create a new place, make a copy of it, and change at that time when you construct it. So the replace, what it does, it just is taking a new, new characters and creating a new string and giving back the object and throw it over. Okay? So that's how that is working. Okay? So it's not. Is immutable because you cannot change anything there. So we see after that the list is something typically that you can change things inside. Uh, so now we use slice. So the slice, you can change the length with the slice, but for the one who come from uh, is something that you already used. Which is Looking this syntax, okay? So it's like I have an array and I want to change the value from zero to the tens by step of two, so you can start to play with, with those things, okay? So I think that in this specific case, I could check, so we really use this a bit. So that's x, I could check my first characters by asking zero, but I could also check from the Third characters, okay, start from zero, to the uh, fifth one by putting the point. So this is start, this is stop, and I could even say that I want to go a bit more, two by two, okay, and that's the step, okay. So you can take elements and slice them. So this is called slice. An interesting thing in Python compared to MATLAB, when I was using MATLAB, is that you can go backwards. So for instance, x minus 1 is defined, it's just that I take the last character, okay, so from, from, the, from the right. And I can go backwards in that sense, okay. 
May I just ask you a quick question to Laurent? Uh, is everyone able to follow the examples now, or is anyone still stuck with preparation? Or does anyone need help to get there? Or is everyone following properly? Okay. Don't be scared. <laughs> if something goes wrong. Okay. Okay, so you can use minus, and then you can slice also from the beginning with positive numbers and go backwards also, so you can mix together x, so from 0 to minus 2, and then I will be able to take from the positive and this one is going from backwards, okay? So you can mix those. I, I find very convenient that you can do negative things, that's something that you cannot do anymore. So what I want now is that under the hood explain what this because this is this is going to be also a function, so that's a slice. So the elements that allow you to do that in Python is a few more. And you can find the help using slice. And you see that actually this is a function where you put the start, the stop and the step. And maybe in your life sometimes you will be you will not be able to use the I mean you don't want to use the shortcuts and you have to use the function. So I want just to show you how to use it. And in that case, to define the size is exactly the same as defining it in that way. Put it inside the variables. Now if you change the type of SL, it will be a size. And I can give it to X. Okay? And you will do the job. So now it's exactly the same way if I would have put here 0, 2 points, minus 1, column 2, OK? Then if you want to escape one of them in these functions, you can use the keyword none to say, I don't have anything to give, and that could be none. And it will just use like if you are escaping it. So if I do this, it would be equivalent, equivalent to do 0 to point, point 2. Okay? It's just a keyword to tell you that uh, you need to put a keyword and not this like nothing. And in the short one, it's like you don't put anything. Okay? That's the equivalent. <coughs> okay, so now, so do you have any question on the string? Now we go on the lists. So if you have something ready to string, that's not clear. But I didn't explain well. No? Fine. So now the list. So list are cool. So we saw string is just to put characters. List are something where we can put anything inside and over we can mutate them. So it means that we can make in-test content and make this, add some stuff inside and this kind of things. So you can have again the help of the list in head and you have a bunch of lots of all. For instance, you have all the underscores, uh, the leading underscore function, you know why it is implemented. But since that is a container, as a string, you will have some similarities, okay? And then you have changes that are just typical of, of the list. So let's start with this. So this is working that way. You can use the square bracket to define the list. Okay. And now this will be an empty list. I am looking inside. So if I check this, and then I check it. Yeah, I have an empty list if I change the type. That's a list. Okay? Python can do that. So we can have empty list, that's really something that we can do. Uh, and then we can put some stuff inside. Okay, so let's start to make integer list like what was above, and I can put one, two, three, four. And if I check now my list, okay, I have numbers inside. So the type will be also a list. And now what I want 
is so that you can train with the style that we just saw before. So press for fun. Try to get the first element of the list. Try to get the second element from the end of the list, and then try to get the third and the fourth element of this list. Okay, so just as practice, you can try to do that. Okay, so it should work exactly the same way that we saw with the string. So it's you turn now. Okay, so if you have any question, you can do this. Right, plus. Questions? I will do it, but 
Sorry? Okay, so it means that to get so my list was this one. So to get the first element is zero. To get the second one from the bank minus two. And to get the third element, so it will be uh, one, two, two, the fourth. So, how do you get the force in that case? Do I put four or do I put five? Three? Okay. If I put three, I get a number only. So it means that I got the number three. So I got only the third element. Okay. Why that? Because if you change the time, and I think this is something important to remember, because maybe it's not the same in some language. This means, the curly brackets mean that the stuff here is excluded. Okay, so when I say two to three, it will take until the two, and it will not take the third one. So if I want to take the third one, I need to put force, and it will exclude the fourth one. So with that one, it went the index two and three. So it's something to remember that yeah. Every time, every numpy, when you can numpy, check if the last element is included or not by uh, checking the dots. Okay? So if I want to have two elements, this one, and now I have my two elements. So because the first will be, so it's two, uh, index two, index three, and the first one will be included. Okay? Okay, so now what I want is that we already saw that we have the length uh, function. So I want to use in the same way than what we did before. This. I want you to just using the auto compression find the function which counts a specific element inside the inside the uh, inside the list. So for example, I said that we want to count how many number two do we have. Okay? So you can check which function do that. And you can run tell me which one does that because it's obvious. No. Count? Yeah. Right? And then from count, we can ask and say, okay. The number two here appear one types. Then what I'm saying now is that we can maybe append the value. So we have our list and we add a new value inside. And we add a new, a new value too, just to see how our content is working. I mean, it's working like what we expect a lot. So find a function inside that, which makes appending. First, we get the first one. And you can add stuff with it, OK? So it means that. If I take my list and that I want to add a new values, so let's say two because I want to put up the words. I forgot what is. And I tap enter, and now that I'm checking my list, I have appended a number of other lists. Okay? So if I check. My count. Now I'm talking that there is two, two. Okay. So if you want to add a new element, keep in mind append is one of the functions that uh, you, you really have to use a lot. Okay. There's another interesting function which is sort up there. So if I have a list, so I can use it now just to show you. And that I ask sort function. And that I check my list. It just in place, okay, so the same list in place, move the two different brands at the position that it should be. Okay. What else you have inside that is interesting? Uh, pop. So pop is also something interesting because I know you want to remove a specific. So 
What I just ask now is, okay, the I want to pop free, so you check this popping free, and then if I check my list, he remove it, and in the same time he return with the value. So for instance, you want to go inside a list and just pop numbers, okay? So you can do it, and just getting the element, and at the same time is removing from the, from your list. So then you have a bunch of options that you can check the the dog string every time. We can remove inserts, and they are all different, slightly different from each other. So that's that's something. But all those functions they are specific from uh, the list. So we saw with the string that we end with, uh, start with, replace. They are specific for the string. List. They are those specific functions. Okay. I have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, for Apple, you have just one uh, input argument. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want to add a list, for example, to another, without, for example, appends two or more than two arguments, what would you do? Okay, I know it is maybe the next question. Or oh. this. But just using append, not add. Ah, you see, I mean, what you will use really is you will do the concatenations. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I will do the concatenations. Okay. Then, if you try, what would happen if I do that? I mean, what are you? I will not execute it. I don't do it. So I have this list here. What would happen if I try to append? I mean, the uh, list with a mistake inside that. What are you for? I mean, what, what would happen if I try to do that? It will add the next set. As so a set. I will have one, two, two, four, five, one, two, three. Yeah, right. No, bracket. Right. So what you do is that you will add, you will consider that this is an element, and you will add it in the next piece. Okay? So if we check this now. You have a list inside the list, so it means already that you can make 2D list. Okay, if you need something that are 2D, you can do something like that. And it means that if I want to access it, if I click minus one to access the last element, what you return me is a list. Okay? So append, you append all the chain inside. So if you want to add element by element, what you would do is for instance, to use a plus a point, which is in place add, so it's the equivalent to say that. Plus. So, in that case, it's what you were wanted to do, okay? So it's with the plus. So, I can use either a, the list equal plus new things or the short things is use the support. Okay. It's uh, not entirely the same thing though. Because <laughs> when you use plus equals, then it does in place modifications where it changes the list. If you yeah. say interest equals interest plus something, then it actually creates a new list, so it creates a copy. And it does not modify the list itself. Yeah. What about concatenate? This, uh, this mm -hmm. function concatenate? Mm -hmm. I don't know how I mean. That's possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one should be here. Mm -hmm. I don't have a function concatenate. You don't have it. Because, I mean, I know that in a file I use it, so you can concatenate yeah. stuff. Yeah. But here you will use for a doctor that tries to do that. I mean, I, what I do is. But, uh, so there is an extend method, though, which, yeah, uh, which expand, yeah. Which yes, adds so multiple elements mm -hmm. to the list. So that's, the thing, so that's kind of the, the append multiple operation. Yep. 
so you can use that search. So you can give any server by the player he will decide. So then the next thing that is interesting with the list is that you can have any type of data inside. So you are not on for the moment with a strike. I mean we already cannot be. We put integers, but actually what we did is just to put a list inside the list. But to make it more obvious, what you can try is to try to add inside the list some string. And you will see that this is still working. Okay. So we can try. Which present version do you have? No, I, I did that high version. Okay. Because you would I don't do you have any true of okay. So I already spoke about the sorting, but you can tell me if yeah that's really not work very We can use the sorting version. So we use already the int list dot sort. And we saw that that was doing modifying X directly. Okay. And another way of doing it, but not changing our, uh, our list itself, is to use the function sorting. So I'm going to do a sorting, but this one will return something. Then when we did int this dot sort, it just resort my list. Also, you sort it this one, okay? So if I do that, I'm sure that you will give me an error. Okay. Which it's kind of obvious why, because now we have like a lot of things inside, and the other thing that is say I cannot make comparison between the list and the integer. So we try to make, because when we sort, we try to check if it's bigger or smaller and move the element. So now you're just telling me that actually I don't know how to make a comparison between this and this. So it's not magic too. I mean, it's now you're on your own. So you should have stuff that you know what you want to read, what you want to do. So we can restart with a nice Things like this list, and if I do sort it, just to illustrate that we have a small difference, this one returns a list, and if I check my original list, it didn't check, okay? And when we are doing that sort, and I am checking this list, so first, here, nothing is written, okay? Here, when I execute it, it returns values, and here it happens in Ints are already the results. Okay? So usually when you use dots and the number of the functions, you modify the variable itself. And why when you use a function, it will already usually return use a function, uh, return use the values. Okay. So that's this part. We already played with the appending. 
I think that we already saw that. So if I use the first, we saw that that's doing a complete explanation. If I use the multiply, what what do you expect? If I take a list, for instance, this list here, and that can make times three. Is it making a bitwise multiplication? I know. Is it multiplying each number by three? Or do you expect that it's doing, I know, like this thing? OK, that's making the computation. So somehow it makes sense. I said that the string was a container. Both are container, both behave the same. So in some way, it's not making something new strange. If you want to have this, and that is between every number story go in the NumPy tomorrow and we'll show you how to do that. Okay? And but in two file terms, the list will just be replicated. In the same way here we can have the in, okay? That's what that is the string, so I can ask it to as in the int list. Okay, and it's telling it to opposite. In the same way. So now that's a small exercise for you. So create a list with the quick response of the of the years, and then you can append one month, and then you can uh, add inside Jane, uh, June, uh, May, and June. Okay. So you start with three months, then you append one year, and then you have two more. Okay. So we have two few minutes to play with that. which is just creating a list. Okay. And this is equal, and then I create three strings, which are the three first ones of the year. And then I would like to append a new only value inside, so I can put the function added. And then I can make another pocket name things inside. Okay, so it puts May and Roma. And if I check, okay, this is what we did like since then. So everybody have a question that I mean something like strength happened or. Okay, now we can go to what is top. So now we saw the list. And usually the main thing is that uh, we know about top. So we saw that the list are mutable, but as you can put values, top are known as an immutable list. Okay? So it's like we want to create, uh, we want to put several elements inside, but we don't want to be able to change them. Okay? It's usually used in that way. 
So to create them, to create this, we can put x for the verb, and then put our list of elements. And now if I check what's the type of x, okay, it's a tuple. So when I say that it's immutable, it means that as the string, if I try to do this, it will tell me tuple of x doesn't support item of size. So it means that I cannot change it, okay? So that's what would happen. So that could be useful, for instance, if you want to create the months and you will never change the months of the year, so you can print. I will just use this here. And you don't want people to be able to modify anything in the months, and you will use the top of for that. Just so usually I say that we use the top of for this reason, we don't want to change something, but sometimes we want also to use it to unpack the parameters. Uh, so imagine that I have a tuple in that way. You could be able to get the three values of the tuple in three different variables using this line. So I can say I have those three values here, and I want to unpack each of them inside R1, R2, R3. Okay. So doing this. Then if I check R1, I have the value of the first element in the tuple. So I could unpack element by element. So that could be also useful for this. Okay. And that's that's actually the more common uh, use case for tuples. It's more common than the so in the um, in the month example, uh, personally I would rather use a list because uh, lists tend to represent uh, a sequence of, of similar of, of items that are kind of the same, right? So uh, numbers, for example, or month names, you would keep those in a list. For a tuple, um, tuples you would rather use um, if you have a sequence of different things, right? So first index is something different from the second, and they distinguish uh, um, uh, by, by their index. So, a list of similar things and a couple of different things. Yeah. I agree. And, uh, but usually we always say is the immutable list, but usually you don't use it for the same words. Uh, so that's the truth. Uh, then I have a small puzzle. So I will just record uh, what we already saw. So we saw that if I do that, we saw that when we create the list, we can assign the values inside. Okay. And we saw also that if I have a tuple and I try to modify something, it's not working. So now as a monthly exercise, so if I have a tuple where I have a list inside, and what I will try to do is to take the element here and try to append the value. What would happen? I mean, what's our first thoughts? Won't work. Okay, that seems logic because that's a tuple here. But, uh, I mean, it should raise an error. So let's see. Okay, so it raised an error. That's a little something. But the fun part, I mean, it's just because I find it fun. If you check then x, small x, actually it's failed, but we append the element inside. So we make both, which is something kind of weird. So then if you think about what Python could have done is what we did is we took the list, we have things, we try to place it back inside the tuppers, and then it fell at that point. So we make both operations, even if we raise errors, we append the value before. Okay, so it's just something that I want to find and that they want to show you, so I don't know. <laughs> so it's good that it's failing because at least normally you will not make a try except or I know you will try not to continue your work, okay? But uh, it's good to know what I think. 
So I think it's, I have two types more of containers. So one is a set. So for the people that maybe make some maps, that's interesting because the set allows you to make fast set operations or so union, difference, and those type of things, which I'm not explaining. But so you can create set in that way, and what it would happen is that you would take only the unique values of this, and then when I have two sets, I can make this campus. I can create another set with only one value, and then I can say set dot uh, x dot d. set of versions, you have something specific in Python. So here I was showing that you can check if it's a set or intersections. So the last thing which is interesting in Python and is, uh, is the dictionary. Uh, I think pray with the month example is maybe the best thing that you wanted to use because you want might be interesting to map the months to actually the number of the months. So you could create a dictionary, and the dictionary is just a kind of mapping between a key, which will be in the table, okay, that you can uh, change, with a certain value. So to create this, the syntax is the following. You get your key, so you have curly brackets, you get your key, two points, and the value. And then if I want the second element, the key, two points, and the value. So if I do that, then that's the dictionary here. And to access one of the elements, is also a container, so I can use the uh, square bracket. And now I can search my key. Okay? So my key was generally. So I can search generally. And it will return me the corresponding values. Okay, so like this, you can make fast mapping, and if you check the function of D, yeah, items, key, and values, which could be probably something that you can I mean, usually use. Which, if I check what item, it will return one by one. A set, of, a set of elements. So it will return me the key and the value of the first thing that I have in the dictionary, and then it will return me the second. And then you can have the same things for, uh, if you check, you can only get the keys if you want, or you can only get the values. OK? So that's, that's the thing that the dictionary will use. And we'll see afterwards that with the for loop, you can easily untype values uh, to a key and things and loop over all the elements that will be generating instance. That's what, what it is useful for. What we'll see afterwards. Okay. So you can add a new item inside the dictionary because the dictionary is in the work. So you can say, say March is equal to 3. And now you can add a new thing. Okay, so you use this fast new thing inside. Or you can even, here I put an example. You can create another dictionary and you can use the function update to update the dictionary with another dictionary. Okay? So, like that. Okay, that's a bit in the dictionary. 
Do you have any question with that? Okay, so that was all the basic types. So now I can go. Perfect timing. Perfect timing? For the break, right? So now we can take a break. <laughs>